Thank you all for being here today. Uh, we we got quite a few things to cover. Hopefully we'll get a few more of our committee members uh, on board before we get into those things. But we got a couple of opening comments here. Uh, do you want to cover the mass? Okay. Uh, you're all probably aware of what's going on in our community, in our country, in the world about uh, the Delta variant of COVID is emerging in force and uh, starting to be a real thing. So it's been brought to our attention that we suspended our activities for a year because of this stuff the first time around. And we all thought it was over, and obviously it's not. So at this point, all we are wanting to express totally informally is our support for people to wear a mask if you want, don't if you don't want it, socially distance if you want it. Whatever behavior you need to exhibit to feel safe or if you're protecting others or whatever your level of personal concern about the situation is, is totally acceptable in this room. And uh, no peer pressure one way or another yet. Uh, we all just have to wait and see what's, how big this train coming down the track is. And it, may, it may get worse in terms of what we've got to do with the we're, uh, we're trying to just carry on. We, we just don't want to take another year long break while something else ravages us. So, that being said, do what you feel best doing. Any comments? Okay, very good. Appreciate y'all hanging in there. Uh, one thing I need to uh, to bring up is I checked with Cecilio uh, with, uh, Martinez with the uh, MPO last week. Uh, it took him a while to answer the phone, and he was a little sheepish when uh, he got down to it, but he says, actually, Don, I'm on vacation. I'm going to be on vacation next week, too, so I won't be at your meeting. So uh, that he will not be on the agenda today, but he assures me he will have something for us at our next meeting. Uh, so anyway. That's all I have on that. Uh, we'll move ahead into the uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, you may recall we deferred on the July 20th minutes that were on the last meeting's agenda, and you should have the minutes of August the 3rd. Thank you again to our scribe, Erica, for the good minutes. Uh, any, any questions, comments, revisions? Well, John, uh, the, the the band will, yeah, as long as we have consensus, we don't need to vote, but uh, I think we can get consensus on the minutes. Come in. Come in, Ms. Pearson. <laughs> you don't need to sneak in. All right. I make motion we accept the minutes as written. All right. Got a motion for both sides. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes of July 20th and August the 3rd. Is there any objection to approval of the motion? Hearing none, one minutes are approved. The second was Gary Williams. Okay. Um, we have public comment, and I want to call first on Milan Nicolick. Did I get that name out? Michael. 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 Um, Milan is with the Calvary Groundwork Conservation District, and uh, he's got a statement that he'd like to read for us today. Well, co chairs, I appreciate this opportunity, and the uh, rest of the commission committee, uh, I have a statement to read from Calvary uh, Groundwork Conservation District. I am the Precinct 2 Director and President of the district, and uh, several weeks ago we got together as a as board and actually. Uh, uh, agreed that we should go on the record with some type of uh, comment to, to the committee. And this is our, our response. Uh, it's from the Calvary Ground Conservation District. It's a resolution requesting that any transportation planning avoid sensitive recharge features within Kimball County. Whereas the Calvary Groundwater Conservation District is charged with the stewardship and regulation of the groundwater resources within the boundaries of Kendall County and 
whereas many known and unknown sensitive recharge features exist within the district. For example, the areas around Cibolo Creek and the Lower Glen Rose Formation <coughs> outcrop are recognized as significant recharge features within Kendall County. And whereas the Lower Glen Rose Formation outcrop has a high density of sensitive recharge features, including closed depressions, sinkholes, caverns, solution cavities, solution enlarged fractures, swallowed holes, faults, fractures, bedding plane surfaces, and reef deposits. Whereas the district opposes the location of any major proposed transportation project uh, that may negatively reflect recharge, water quality, or water quantity, and whereas the directors of the Cow Creek Groundwater Conservation District recognize the value of recharge and the protection of sensitive recharge areas. Now, therefore, be it resolved and ordered by the directors of the Cow Creek Groundwater Conservation District that, one, the district expressly requests that any transportation planning include a geologic assessment of any proposed routes. Two, the district requests the opportunity to review and comment on any geologic assessments and prepared, that are prepared for planning purposes. Three, the district requests that alternate or existing routes be given priority consideration to any route proposing a new crossing of the Cibolo Creek. Four, the district requests that extraordinary engineering measures be taken to protect and maintain sensitive recharge features and provide for the protection of or from spills and releases. And lastly, five, the district further requests that if proposed route must cross any sensitive recharge areas, then that route should be de designated as an elevated parkway to limit on and off ramps and impact to the surface geology or hydrology. Uh, centered, uh, signed and entered on this day, 9 August 21, signed by myself. And unanimous consent on the entire board. So I do appreciate the opportunity to read this in the record. Uh, the rest of you, uh, many members have copies and public copies are available for, uh, if you'd like them also. Okay. So thank you very much. Would you entertain any questions? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yes. Well, I have a couple Go just ahead. to clarify the the the, high, the, the the title of your resolution says that it avoids sensitive recharge features, but then you get farther down into the enumerated uh, request, and there's it sounds like you left the door open that if it has to happen, then there's it's a qualified avoidance. Is that correct? That's that's correct. We realize our our legal limitations are. Uh, quite constrained, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we recognize that, and we don't want to overstep those boundaries, but by the same token, uh, we do realize that there will have to be alternatives considered, and, and that's why, yes, we did say absolutely not, but okay. And the second question is on number five. Uh, you said that if we do have to cross a sensitive recharge area, that the route be designed as an elevated parkway to limit off and off ramps. Now, your intent there is, I mean, uh, there are ways to put a surface roadway that eliminates access to, so it's not necessarily the elevation, but it's the access to the roadway is that you're after here or both? We are primarily focused on limiting access, in ingress and egress. And we understood that parkway elevation uh, is, is the most uh, uh, not logical, but uh, Thanks. Accepted Thanks. practice, Thanks. and it does can be limited limiting uh, egress and. Uh, yes, we are not, not prescribing solutions per se. We're taking uh, uh, recommendations and comments from recognized experts in this area uh, that you are not but from a geologic perspective. We understand that there's least disturbance from that type of parkway approach for elevated uh, roadway that limits on and off. That's what we're trying to get to. Um, I, you know, I was in the room when that was being drafted, and I think it was actually Kirk Campbell who was sort of specifying this, and he was leaning in favor of essentially a bridge, if you will, over cars, the karst, you know, dense karst areas, you know, so that those recharge features are minimally impacted. They're not paved over, they're not filled in, they are literally spanned. Um, yeah. So that's that that was the leaning as as I understood it, why he felt strongly for that language. And yes, the other thing is of course the access component and not trying not to promote, uh, uh, you know, sort of blow out the development of that, that that area of the recharge. So, well, Ben, did I misunderstand Dr. Benny, or did I might want to make this up? That even the pillars that one would 
installed to hold up an elevated roadway would be suspect in a first aid area. That's a good question. That's what I recall. As I recall the presentation, yes, he was focused on the fragility of a karst foundation, but recognizes that if there were to be structures made, they can be engineered. And then he's just saying, I'm not providing advice. I'm just look, looking to provide an additional option you may want to consider. This is not my advice per se as much as my observation from past experience. But you're exactly right. It's the, it's the uh, structure of a karst line structure. Gary? Do you intend to uh, use the Kentucky Highway Patrol Service Center City Councils of Bernie and Farrell to yes. the county as well. Because yes, I think long term, I, I don't not support your statement here, but we just don't have that authority to mandate these type of well, uh, we understand. But I, I think it'd be important later on when we discuss our our final report that we, we find a place to put this in. If we all agree <coughs> that this is a, a policy recommendation or whatever. Uh, Joe Dumina, let me say just one thing before Joe says anything. Bobby Bailly, I think, was appointed by Farrell's Ranch yes. last week or a week before last uh, and uh, suddenly came down with COVID. Mm -hmm. So Joe Dumina, he's asked Joe to be uh, in place on, on his stead until he returns. So Joe is yeah, here. Well, I'm, I'm actually going to stand up and talk as, as a District 2 Director and President of the Trinity Drilling Road Groundwater Conservation. Okay. We uh, are primarily northern Bear County. My district does include Farrell Ranch. Farrell Ranch does fall under the Trinity Glen Rose Groundwater Conservation District. We do extend into Kendall County and Comel counties where the city's out or city limits of Farrell Ranch. So we have a little bit of a. We are also considering a resolution and we have it on our agenda for the September 9th meeting, a similar sort of resolution to present to this committee as we feel is very important take those cars featured because even though our our physical jurisdiction is northern bear county much of our recharge is coming in kendall county all the way up to comfort into a trinity Glen road so, and we uh, work closely with cow creek all the time on issues like this just wanted to bring that up thank you joe look forward to your resolution and i want to commend cow creek especially for the for the very conscientious way in which you brought this forward. I think it advances the community dialogue in a very responsible way. Doesn't mean we're all going to agree with this or support this, but I think it clearly states what your interests are and why. And I think if we can all do that, we're going to move this ball down the way. Well, I appreciate that. That's our intent to increase the public knowledge, draw more people into a conversation, awareness of recharge. We talk about it all the time. Uh, it's difficult for us to admittedly to quantify it, even though we've dedicated our features. In fact, we've gone so far as to uh, commission a uh, hydrologic study of the, most of the county, uh, with the exception of uh, Mr. DeMille's uh, area. And we work with George Wispenby, their manager on the same thing. So we're on the same page with not only studies, but also uh, statements like this in the future. Very good. Any other public comment? <clears throat> All right, if something comes up during the meeting, we have another, another opportunity at the end of the meeting. Uh, okay. Did you email, do you want your presentation here? We're just going to go through the... If we could project it, that would be helpful. I, I didn't email it to anybody. I didn't email it. Oh, yeah. She's over here, but... Uh, we like putting pressure on the IT department. Should I try and see if we can do it? You can try. <laughs> <You're right>. um, <laughs> While you're doing that, yes. so, let's try it. Uh, our team member that has that information. <laughs> you want me to email yeah, this? I didn't, I didn't take, you know, I didn't ask you. <laughs> Put you on the spot. We worked so hard to get this done, we failed to ask them for the other ones. Um,
your own recommendations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do some housekeeping, uh, move down to item number seven. Uh, I know that we have, uh, I think there's a general desire that we get through it this, uh, in the fall of this year, but I think in order to meet that, we may need to have some extra meetings. Uh, this month is one of those meetings where we could have an extra span so conceivably we could have a meeting two weeks from today which would be the 31st our next regularly scheduled meeting is in three weeks now if we go to the 31st we would still have the meeting on the first meeting in september and there was some confusion caused by doing that last time so on the downside we're going to cause confusion on the upside we might get a little extra work done so just want to know how you guys feel about having a meeting on the 31st uh, I will note Jonah Evans reached out to me earlier today and said, hey, I can't make today's meeting. He's in East Texas, but then he also said he's, he's, he saw that suggestion about the 31st. He said he's not going to be in town. He had the other meeting on his schedule, not this, this other more spontaneous one. That other meeting needs to stay on his calendar. That was the confusion. Okay. That, this, this suggestion the, on one on the first of the following month. Okay. We are locked in on first and third. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we're going to have a, a one week. We're going to have a meeting, and then the next week we have a meeting. So that's fine. He's ready for that second meeting. Of Got it. Uh, I'm just. Yeah. We had. We had. There was a lot of confusion the last time we did it. So that's, that's what we're trying to clarify. If we do the additional meeting, it a week later we're doing it again. We're going to stay on first and third. Mm -hmm. Jeff, Jeff Carroll. Jeff, Jeff Carroll. Um, and I wanted to just personally thank our project uh, subcommittee members. They worked uh, hard and, and often on a weekly basis from the 1st of June until now. Um, and our overarching goal was to, um, to improve uh, transit in and around Bernie, um, primarily to those local businesses and places that we all need to go, the HEBs, the post office, the libraries, the drug stores, the um, banks, um, schools. Um, we also hope to um, work around many of the choke points that we have in our community in terms of moving in and around town. Um, we, we also saw a need to move traffic up, uh, more efficiently across I-10 because we have four major areas where we can cross 10, possibly five in the near future, um, which we'll talk about in a, uh, a little bit. Um, and, we, and we wanted to present to you some options that we felt would, would be very low in the uh, contentiousness domain and that we could reach consensus on. Um, and we think that these small changes over time um, will have measurable impacts on the way that traffic moves in and around. And we're hopeful that we can implement these small changes and then reassess and measure the impacts of those changes so that we can then more fully discuss the needs of the community. So it's a little bit of a different approach um, that has been had in the future. I know that, or in the past, um, I know that with road planning, um, you know, future projections are very important because of the cost and the need to acquire right-of-way 
but we really didn't feel like our committee was situated um, just resource-wise to have conversations like that, and I really didn't think that small group of people uh, in, in a room uh, should be having those conversations. I felt like it needed to be a more public um, conversation. So you're gonna see within our packet, and you have, uh, hopefully all of you have a printed copy of it while we um, work to get it up on the, the screen. But um, we have just some bullet points on some of the transportation issues that are not road projects. And I'd like to go through some of those um, to clarify and to make sure you know our intention is understood. Um, one of the big deficits uh, within our community is that the county does not have a transportation plan. And it's been recommended by many that they look at creating something, even if it is a statement of current conditions um, throughout the county, that will serve as a county transportation plan. What it does is it allows conversations to happen in a more formalized fashion with development that's coming into the community. Um, one of the choke points um, that has been raised numerous times by all of us is the contribution uh, to traffic that the schools make. And one of the problems that we were able to identify through consult uh, with BISD is that those buses are not allowed to travel between many neighborhoods that are approximate to each other because gates are closed. Um, and this, this necessitates the bus drive in and then out onto the major thoroughfare, back in again, back out onto the major thoroughfare. So, you know, two or three or four buses go into a community on any one day, that traffic comes back out onto the major thoroughfare in a stop and start fashion. So we wanted to bring that issue to the forefront to talk about that. It also provides a locked barrier to kids using the neighborhoods for safe passages to the schools. Some of these neighborhoods are within a half a mile of a school, but the kids can't get there because they don't have good sidewalks. Um, they're on a major road, um, which is not a safe passage. And it, it seems like it's an opportunity for us to have conversations. We know that we really can't impose this idea on these neighborhoods. They're governed by HOAs. Um, curiously, some of these roads are paid for by the city. I'm not mistaken, um, but we still don't have the authority to go through those roads and use them. So I think that that's something that is an outreach opportunity um, for conversations with the HOAs. Um, so some of the some of the other talking points um, we know we have uh, 1,200 to 1,400 single-family homes coming on board um, west on 46. It's way out in the county. Um, that there's not a whole lot of authority or controls that we have, but it will impact transportation on 46. Um, so we just we need to keep our eye out on that. Um, we felt like we were discussing um, um, movement through the community, and Esser Road came up, and you know Esser Road, the biggest the obstacle there about improving mobility on that road. Um, and, and putting in a turn lane perhaps and improving the sidewalks is it would take out parking um, if we did something like that. And parking for the main events, football, graduations, and things like that. So we wanted to, uh, and recommended that the City of Bernie and BISD start talking about ways that they can um, use underutilized resources, uh, city park parking, perhaps some of the church parking, if the city ever does a fire, um, you know, land to build a parking uh, garage, um, and then to figure out how we can do a trolley to get people from these parking areas to um, their main event and back. Um, we have one pathway that we talked about quite a bit, um, and and it's on the, it's in the northeast quadrant. It's between Esperanza and Bentwood. There's a, a small parcel of property. Um, that's been on the market for a while. It's in the, um, it's in the Brown Creek um, uh, flood area, um, and we felt like this was something that we should look at in terms of creating a hike bike path for kids to get from Esperanza to the high school uh, or vice versa.
versa. Um, Bentwood kids over to the elementary school. And it just gives, you know, another way for us to move kids um, safely uh, to their schools. Um, opportunistically, the closure there at Cascade Caverns and the Frontage Road um, has made traffic a lot easier um, for the school district going um, left off of um, Old San Antonio Road um, onto Cascade Caverns Road. Um, we know that the future, um, there, are, there are some proposals out there for a roundabout. I'm not sure what that configuration is, but just kind of incidentally, we, we wanted to pass that forward. Um, we did recommend some signage directing traffic off of 46 to I-10, um, not only at 3351, but also again at her uh, road. Um, we felt like with better signage, we would uh, have perhaps a better flow of traffic um, uh, to using that, that access to I-10. Um, we talked about some additional studies around diverting traffic around Main Street. Um, and in particular, we wanted to have um, um, some information from the Main Street merchants about um, you know, what is their parking problem? Is it a parking problem? Is it too many cars on the road? Is it not enough crossings? Um, is, it, is it a daily thing? Is it an hourly thing? Or, or does it happen at different times? Um, and I think I also, you know, felt pretty strongly that we need to ask them, what is the financial impact when Main Street is closed? Um, do your sales indeed improve? Do they decline? Do, do, do they remain the same? But I think that there's just, we couldn't get our hands on good information about what the Main Street traffic complaint was. Um, we also wanted to look at how traffic, when it does go through Main Street, which direction it goes in, um, it, what's the origin and destination. And uh, we had some offers uh, to gather that data uh, and we're hopeful that that can uh, give us a little bit more information. And finally, with respect to Cecilio um, Martinez's um, work at AMPO, he came to us um, a couple of weeks ago and presented his preliminary work, and he's done a lot of good work in putting together, you know, themes, and he's sorted through individual comments, and so he's offered to continue helping us um, with that process. The second page in your handout is this map, um, which is yellow, um, and it is a map of all planning units uh, as defined by the PISD demographers report. And the highlighted uh, planning units uh, combined represent um, 80 and almost up to 85% of the expected growth coming our way in the next decade. And I felt it important to include this map in our presentation to show you that the preponderance of uh, movement is, is into the southern part of our county. Um, we define these quadrants as south of 46, east of I-10, west of I-10, north of 46. Um, uh, and if you look at 46, you'll see that there's a good majority of that um, uh, growth is, is on the southern side. So when we looked at our transportation infrastructure, we looked at the City of Vernon transportation plans, we looked at some of the recommendations of the prior studies, um, and we, we thought intensely about, all right, this is where the growth is coming, and, and we have not done a formal comparison of the demographer's report from the ISD to the state demographer's report. But a napkin calculation says that they are near comparable. So um, I, I think we, once we investigate that to see how they are, if they are comparable, um, this actually represents where the growth is going. It's not an amorphous mass of people just coming everywhere in the county. Um, it is targeted. We, you know, fairly targeted at this point in time. Lots of opportunities for more growth, certainly. But um, as you move into the county, different rules take over, and um, 
until the water scarcity problem is solved, that growth is going to be somewhat hamstrung by water um, if it is ever resolved. So I think you're going to see here today uh, the, our uh, project summary focuses primarily a lot on transportation in and around these areas towards the south. Um, we have um, some additional uh, uh, information just recently that uh, I guess you've noticed that Balcones Creek um, overpass on I-10 south of the city. Um, that area is in Bear County and the development Lemon Creek is um, proposing to put uh, access off of Old Fred Road in the southern part of uh, our county and in that northern part of Bear County that ultimately connects over uh, to that buckskin, you know, or it's not buckskin, it's uh, Balcones Creek crossing. Um, what's important about that is HEB is going to be on the south side of that road. Uh, the Alamo Area College District campus is on the west side of 10 and on the north side of that road. So that community is going to see a lot more traffic. Um, what it does for folks in the southern part of Kendall County is it gives them another way to get over to I-10 without having to go back up to Cascade Caverns Road and drive traffic up that road and out and off over to 10. So in our thinking, we're thinking, okay, well, if you can take some of that, offload some of that traffic on a very heavily congested area and move it to the south to get people on and off I-10, it might help things uh, uh, quite a bit on that Cascade Caverns area, which we understand is so incredibly sensitive. Having said that, questions? Well, comment is a great summary, and thank you for your hard work. And thank you. <laughs> um, it, it really was our pleasure to do this. Do you want to go through each of these individual recommendations for projects? Uh, I would like to. Yeah, I have um, I have my team here, so we're gonna we're gonna do a little tag team presentation. Um, but our first project um, is Cascade Caverns, and I guess um, Jeff can help fill in some of my gaps. But Cascade Caverns right now uh, is a mess. Um, the keynote Cascade and I can and Old San Antonio Road or Scenic Loop Road is kind of a big mess. Um, but there is a proposal out with Campbell to put in a roundabout yeah. and to expand um, or widen that area. Correct. The city of Bernie has made a submittal for the MPO called Projects for Cascade Caverns, basically from I-10 to Buckskin, and the scenic loop from I-10 to Cascade, and basically from the southern entrance of the movie theater to the Cascade. We're going to do a roadway improvement project there. Uh, we are going to include a roundabout at Old San Antonio and Cascade for our consultants' recommendations. Um, and it'll be a, a big roadway project. The, the engineer's estimate was nine and a half million dollars. Uh, that three and a half million drainage, just drainage improvements. Um, it has been submitted to MPO called the projects. It has made it out of the scoring committee, and it's on the list of projects to be funded, and it's in the political world now. That will be talked about at the next MPO meeting. I think it will be the next meeting the week after. Um, so we'll see if it continues to make it on the list. Of the projects. Now it could be that we could find out this year, yay, you guys get in the, the, the minimum was a 20% city match or 80% federal dollars. The city offered um, to do a 30% match at existing bonus points. Um, so we could find out this year, yay, you guys win, you guys get this project. But it, here it is. Five years from now, so it, it's a five-year project. So we don't know when when this funds will be available until we find out what the number is selected. So it could be, and that could, if it's a five-year delay, we might start looking at maybe some temporary solutions that get us through the next five years. And that temporary solution would be short-term, um, just simply um, adding a center turn lane uh, along Cascade Caverns. Um, from the access road um, down through, I believe we included uh, South Lane. Um, you know, just to make it easy for people to make that turn 
and keep traffic moving in each direction. Don, should I wait for public comment or you can ask a question on this? I'll go either way, whatever you want. I'm open. Tom, I can, can you hold it? Because I'm afraid we got a lot of ground to cover if we start getting okay. engaged. I, I appreciate you asking. Um, is this, I'm just curious, Jeff, is this a complete street plan? In other words, yes. a walk by? Okay. So we have 10 we foot that. shared paths mm -hmm. above the curb. So we're not putting bike lanes on the pavement. But we, instead of a five foot sidewalk, we did a 10 foot shared path on both sides. Thanks. Buffer it a little bit? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, should be correct. Yeah. So, Vinci, the, the, just for clarification, the red is, it is the phase it is the project that basically the city submitted and what you're recommending in this sheet is the green or the red green is the same project sure so really in red i mean we could find out that we didn't get selected right um, but the red is the limits of what our city submittal was for okay. um, and in green is maybe like a phase two project at a later date uh, because we again with the city submittal stopped at buckskin um, so they'll it'll transition back to two lanes all the way I will say that BISD has identified this area as one of the more challenging areas for kids to walk to school in. They just don't have good sidewalks, uh, good crossings, you know, etc. And some of these neighborhoods are well within the two mile distance, um, which then compels them to, to ride in and pick up kids. Yeah, and to, to back up what Vince is saying, you'll see Southland neighborhood, which was originally going to be 400 homes, and they're looking at expanding it with an additional 27 acres and closer to upper four, as close to 500. And when you look at the average number of students per household in the school district, you're looking at about up to 300 kids, of which approximately 200 would be middle school or elementary school, and those schools are right off the Cascade Caverns. So the whole logic behind having a shared bike and walk path is to encourage a safe way for those kids with less than half a mile to get to school. Did we ever consider, <clears throat> I, I know the question was asked about, is the sidewalk right up to the street or is it separated? Did, did we ever consider putting a little three foot high barrier, fence barrier to keep bicycles from wandering off into the traffic? You know, we really didn't talk about stuff like that at all. That's something that, you know, we just, we were going conceptually. Okay. Um, there's, there was one engineer at the table, possibly two, um, you know, halfway through the conversation, and we didn't want to mess up the flow of things by trying to do something that we, I'm sorry, Jeff, but there were two and a half. <laughs> my, my apologies. I do want to point out this bullet the last bullet is um, adding that center turn lane along Old San Antonio Road from Hope to Cascade Caverns. So um, that again expands um, the, the ease of traffic around people that are turning. Um, so, yeah. all right. So the next page. Um, so well, yeah. So the, the one that I have on that with this Old San Antonio to Hope Road and all that is. You know, and again, I'm bringing up the complete streets, the bike ability, walk abilities, because honestly, there is no way for a kid on this part of Bernie to kind of get over to the rest of Bernie safely no, if it's all not. cars. And we have a high school on these that's on these that are on these roads, so that is on these roads, whatever. <laughs> so I think it's kind of a very important place to especially emphasize those kinds of features. It's like a spine, if you will, a connection to those to to amenities all along the San Antonio Cascade. For, for all ages. I think we did have conversations to that effect and perhaps didn't make it onto here. Mm -hmm. um, I think there, the concern was the right of way along the old San Antonio. Um, but ideally, I think the, the pedestrian component is inherently in all of our recommendations, <laughs> okay. whether it's specified or not. So the next page is John's Road Improvement um, from I 10 over to School Street. Uh, we'd like to see a center turn lane uh, as a short-term solution uh, and a long-term is to have your um, five lanes, two in each direction of the center turn lane 
plus the pedestrian bike uh, component on one side. Did you um, say five lanes? Ultimately, that is a long term. Okay. That's not what's shown here. Long terms. It sure isn't. I mean, I, well, the only difference between short term and long term is the pedestrian, right? Right, that's what I see here. Okay. So, do we need to change this or? Short-term is just a two-way left turn, so it goes from two lanes to three, and the long-term can be a So we, so we want the short, the long-term cross section to look like the long-term cross section cascade pattern. Is that right? That's what we spoke about. Okay. Mr. Mr. So five lanes is like Bandera going past HUB, kind of a screw. You know, yeah. as they call it, the street road. It's, uh, yes. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? It's a, look it up, Strode. It's, uh, so the next it's, it's very auto centric, to say the least. That's my point. It, it is. Um, it is, Ben. And, and at some point, we, we do feel that you have to move the cars sure. down the road and off the road. And that makes the road a, a little bit more centric for pedestrians as well. You know, if you have dense traffic. Um, the next one is Old Fred Road, low water crossing at the Hill County Line. Um, and Lemon Creek, we understand, is, um, is taking care of that. Uh, it's um, being built to accommodate a 10 year event. Right. Say that again, Kim. So the our conversation with the San Antonio peers that the Lemon Creek development is going to upgrade the low water crossing on the creek there to a 10 year structure um, as part of that permit through San Antonio. And they are additionally then making that connection from the old Brad to And that's supposedly going to start construction in the next 30 to 45 days. 30 to 45 days. So the, sec the next page after that is that Old Fred Road um, And again, I want to reiterate these, these projects are in Barrett County. Um, but we do feel that they are important to Kendall County. Uh, they give access to another parcel to Einstein uh, and the movement of traffic um, south and off of Cascade Road as well. And will it have the pedestrian component? I haven't seen the plan, yeah. so I don't know. Um, the next slide would be Scenic Loop Road. Before we leave that, I'd like to ask the two groundwater representatives, in light of your positions relative to this, uh, you know, development in this area, I know this is in Bear County, but will you all take a position on, say, this Greenfield Road? Are you all safe from our position? Me, me personally, it's in a recharge zone also, in the Edwards. It yeah. now becomes complicated with the EA issues. Right. So the, the answer to your question, I, personally, I would you know, weigh in and say, uh, there's a concern over here, what's the EA doing? Say, I, I, I agree. We, we have to we have to know what the impact is going to be. Uh, and I have talked I have talked to the developer of Little Creek, and uh, I'm, I got a gut feeling confidence that he's going to do everything he can to protect the groundwater. It is, it is I mean, the EAA has pretty well documented right. and, and well developed criteria for development. It in falls areas. within that feature. Yeah. yeah. And there are, you know, that's all, but there are in that area, lower Glen Rose features. Yes. That probably in, in the Valcone East. Uh, so. So. so there is a there is a, a, a precedent, I guess, if you will, for a local groundwater conservation district to roll in. But I think the bigger hammer goes with the EAA. Yeah, that's what so I can, if I understand y'all's concerns or your positions, 
as long as EAA is okay with it, y'all feel like the developers have done their due diligence, and the transportation facility would be acceptable. I would say I have to look at what the actual plans look like. Right. I'm not a geologist, but we do have yeah, I, I'm access. Not gonna, I'm not going to. I'm not going to advocate the EAA personally. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. For Sorry to give you a mixed message on that. No, I'm still. I, well, I think it's 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 a it's, you know, it's it's a slide. <laughs> I'm sorry, Oh, no, it's good. All right, so on the southwest side, so we're now on the west side of our town, um, it has been recommended that we uh, improve the Enterprise Parkway coming off of Scenic Loop Road, um, primarily to help ease uh, some of the congestion at Scenic Loop Road and I 10, but with the tech stock uh, contributions uh, that are currently underway today. And, uh, that has um, eased some of that congestion, and um, our, my conversation with Jeff was this this project dropped a little bit lower on the, the list um, until a, a, another look at the congestion at I-10 and Correct. It's a project that's on our current five-year CFD, but it's uh, probably going to be a four-year five right now. The enterprise is correct. And then again, on the um, southwest side, uh, Regent Boulevard, um, will extend further west and connect up with right-of-way that um, is part of the Mender Spring Development Agreement, leaving a very small um, strip of uh, land uh, somewhere between the green and uh, upper Bacones Road um, that would then give a connection um, from I 10 over to upper Bacones Road and crossing uh, Scenic Loop Road. So it gives that east west connection. It does, it does um, require a acquisition of right of way, it's not necessarily. Um, where the blue line is. In fact, um, I understand the elevations there are kind of uh, challenging, but um, ultimately, if we could gain a connection from the green line, uh, which is dedicated right of way, uh, it would connect the east to the west on the uh, southwest side um, of the community. So, again, the part of the red line, at least from I 10 to the part you see developed is already there, is that correct? Correct. The, the red line is the limits of what Regent Park will do as part of their development. Mm -hmm. but this initial part is there. That needs to be built plus all of the green lines. So oh, right. And the blue. Yes, the Regent Park is about halfway developed now, so the future development will extend that way. Okay, so that will be done by the developer. Further south um, is what we call the Three, which is renamed Corley Farms. Um, and it's a connection to the Upper Balcones Road um, and Valerie Lane Road. Um, Jeff, I would like for you to handle this. This is, this is one that I. Sure. Um, and also, the next page also is kind of a master plan for part of Corley Farms. So, yeah, so Wicked Three, um, most people know it as Peter Horn. Peter Horn is now being called Corley Farms. Um, so, per the development agreement with the city, that developer has to build a, a portion of East West Collector Road. Showing up as the red line. Um, so that part, when we get built with uh, Corby Farms, they'll come in and build a two lane road um, initially with the subdivision. And when they hit their 500 home or when the school gets built, uh, they'll have to build the other two lanes, so the four lane road just through that area. Um, and then there's a continuation, there's a, actually a wicked 3A. Future agreements made with the other uh, district 
take kind of a portion of that green line that will extend it all the way west <coughs> towards up the So the second part of this is um, and the second, uh, the next piece of paper, currently, um, I believe it's Kindle Estates kids, um, have to get out up on Scenic Group Road um, for any kind of pedestrian movement to the potential new school. Um, so we'd like to see created um, a shared path uh, out and around the detention pond, um, routing pedestrian traffic over to Valerie Lane, where uh, kids can more safely um, walk and bike to school uh, when that finally comes online. So we have the development plans uh, in a uh, kind of a, a red dotted path uh, to make that connection. Back up to Region Boulevard. So the Jeff again. Sure, no problem. So Region again, the, the same red line is the same red line we looked at on a couple previous slides. It's already built today. Is the portion of Region Boulevard, um, and then there's a north-south green line um, that will eventually spur our thoroughfare plan to connect. Buckies, when they develop, will build a short piece, uh, and then there'll be a gap across the Bay of Miller property. And then Regent Park will actually build a, a big portion of that north-south road. Some of it's already been built today. Uh, and then there'll be another gap, but eventually it'll tie into that road that we just talked about on Port of Farms Road. That is that Tel <coughs> Telford? Yeah, Telford. Telford. So yeah, we're going to have a street name issue one day. We have yeah. Main Street, Buckies Way, Telford Way. So that is an extension of Main Street. Right. Right? <laughs> which would mean the folks from Regional Park, which is eventually the new region of Holmes, would have a different way to get to Main Street. That's correct. Correct. Yeah, they, they get <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm kind of curious. The proposed typical section <coughs> on a couple of these pages around this Valerie Lane Road, but you know, it says Regent Park Beater Beater Horn connection to the south, and then the previous one, Corley Farms Road connection to Upper Balcones. They're huge right away. Is there a reason for that? Is there a long-term game plan? Is that a thoroughfare? Strategy like I just it's like wow, that's a lot of a lot of space designated for. So I didn't, didn't didn't prepare these, but I know uh, our thoroughfare plan there like 96 and 102, I believe, the rideways. So I think it's just a graphical program. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because those you know when people build parks in the middle of roads, they're not used as parks. They actually just sit there. <laughs> they might have some scenic amenity, but they have no real quality of life enhancement beyond that. Well, yeah. It can be used part of your drainage system. Oh, Drain, that's true. Drainage, yeah. uh, lots of times they, yeah. they're helping protect trees. They're right. you know, building roads around trees. Right. Yeah. It's also kind of an island that's out there. Not, that's hybridized, not a stack in terms yeah. of benefits. Just throwing that out there. Right now, that area I think has 47 or 4,800 homes coming on the road. Yeah. Um, with the developments that have you know, participated with it. The I has to come on for conversations, so I'm gonna guess that when these roads go online, if and when they do, they're gonna start with the three on the move as needed to a, a larger proposal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I just when I think about Herf Ranch, if you go in there, <laughs> it's a lot of open space, but it's not very useful open space is all I'm saying. Just trying to think holistically, not just those you know wheels on on the pavement, but what is that whole experience? And what is that whole right away achieve? Yeah. Rabbits and birds. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. rabbits around the roads. Yeah, that's a great place. So Ben, I think I think we need um, we 
need some help with those conversations. Okay. Um, the folks at the table, um, I, I, I will say, with the exception of Jeff and John, just aren't proficient with that kind of data and detail. Um, we were just looking at the whole framework of moving people across the county and across sections in a way that, um, that makes as much sense as it could to us. It's just kind of common sense, I guess. Um, Coffin Road um, will tie into uh, Spencer Ranch Road. Um, so the short term is to recommend a, a life there on 46 and Coffin Road. Um, Coffin Road does connect to Upper Buckley and of course then um, lands on the freeway access road at some point. Um, and then Spencer Ranch Road on the west side, or actually I guess north side of 46, um, there is a development agreement uh, to extend that road. Um, and then Jeff, can you talk about that, that green road extension from Spencer Ranch to John's? Sure, so the red line that kind of tees off of Forum and Highway 46, the Spencer Ranch development um, will build, they're gonna give us the right of way today and they're gonna build a partial four lane road, partial drop down to two lane road, all the way up to that northern boundary line of Spencer Ranch where that red line ends. And then per our thoroughfare plan, if any of those other tracks, Wind Ranch or any of those other tracks in that area were to develop, um, eventually those developments would give us right away and we'll make it all the way to the But at this time, we don't know if any other developments. So that could, could not happen there. It could be a long time or tracks can start selling by the day. The light does serve the purpose of moving folks safely out of Spencer Ranch. Don, one component of this is what the interim plan is recommended. Well, it's actually the, the, the one that says SH46 Coffin Road improvements right. is what was recommended by the interim committee. Okay, so that has been out there. Right. Uh, and then swinging into the northeast, um, Highway 46. We, we looked at School Street. Um, to, to see if we could get a center turn lane. Um, and we have some opportunity there um, as School Street approaches I-10. Uh, there's that large track that um, is undeveloped. Uh, so along that track, we'd like to see a center turn lane and some pedestrian um, uh, amenities uh, so that folks can, can uh, get there by foot. Uh, we run out of room right of way at Friedrich Creek, so we can't extend that much beyond that. Um, but there is a sidewalk on uh, School Street along the housing, you know, on, on one side for sure, um, with a fair amount of capacity to be expanded um, should those homeowners um, agree uh, sometime down in the future. But um, I, I don't know that the need is going to be there, um, but we felt like it that if we improve School Street to the best of our ability, at some point School Street will become a, a more robust uh, way for traffic on the north side of Vernon to move down to I-10. And then the, the Esperanza Bentley bike and walk path. <coughs> um, there's a lot of what ifs. In this scenario, uh, we, we put it in there um, in the off chance that it, it could move into a conversation. Um, but we would be connecting some of the hiking bike trails in Esperanza over to the Grand Road neighborhood so that the kids can move back and forth between the two neighborhoods and get to their respective schools. Um, it's a floodplain um, and it doesn't have a whole lot of opportunity for other kinds of uses. Um, so it's just something that, that we wanted to put out there as an idea. Yeah, the back.
back up with Vincy saying right now Bentwood the children there and there's about 65 of them that go from that neighborhood to Turf Elementary and when you add in the other two neighborhoods west of Esperanza Woods Burney and Champion Heights there's a whole bunch more kids and there's no safe way for them to walk or bike to school right now so everybody has to go out on 46 and if we're trying to reduce congestion on 46 it would be good if we get up on the other routes to get to the school Pardon? Well, there's going to be 2,400 homes eventually in Esperanza, and eventually, you know, that school will be filled just with Esperanza and Woods of Burning and Champion Heights, but it'll take a while to get there. It will be a very tight zone once it's all developed. But certainly, uh, right now, there's a huge bike rack at Herp, and it gets filled with kids from that neighborhood by Central School. Is this a walkway or is this a car, a road? It's a bike path, hike and bike path. It's not a road. Okay. So it might be easier for the HOA to pass because it wouldn't have traffic. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Rich, was this the one that you said there's likely to be opposition to? No, actually, this that would have been an extension of Champion Boulevard okay. along the road. This is, is way different. I would be a lot less problematic. And I mean, it would seem like if there was an opportunity to expand the bike network within Bentwood, that would be a plus for those folks too, in the cities that are all interested in price. <laughs> so I think it's an awesome. <laughs> yeah, I would comment the only part well, also, it needs to be worked out too, besides getting the property filled in again, but also the, the trails that are shown, and you can see the trails in Esperanza, those are probably the HOA trails, so they're not open to the public. So we have a conversation with Esperanza. Well, they may be the ones who have that much years to You're learning fast. I'll ask. You know, it's a, it is an obstacle. You know, it's. it's it's so. It's a conversation that becomes somewhat frustrating. It, it, you know, when, when So I would bring it up. It's Esperanza. It's a trail to get the Esperanza people to get out to the high school. That's yeah. so they can walk to the football <laughs> game and not park on Esser. That's right. That's, <laughs> That's exactly right. It it's it's three hundred yards, according to Google. Yeah, it's yeah. it's negligible. So. Um, well, uh, it's not a no-brainer. I was on council when we tried to build a trail system in our city. And there was a subdivision that really and truly had the money raised to hire the attorney to sue the city if they took the trail behind their neighborhood. And they were convinced there were going to be criminals and rapists coming into their backyards because there was such an event to their life. So don't underestimate people's ability to get wound up in that thing. My district, I think. You guys are four. I'm not even saying whose district it was in. I'm just saying it was a real thing. And it altered our trail design and really made it poor in that area. It's, it's pretty light. You're up the city streets rather than on the enemy trails. And it was all the evidence showed the property values would have gone up, quality of life would have been protected. There was no there was no good sound reason to object to it, but it was curious. It was emotional and so just uh, I wish the two HOAs we could just sit here and say it's just hike and bike, so it's a no big deal. It could well be. I'm sure it's going to be, but it yeah. seems like a good outreach yeah. opportunity. Oh, it's, listen, yeah. we're a citizens yeah. committee yeah. Yeah. appointed by a bunch of organizations that if we all were on the same page and we published, we'd all get to that. We know all put it. I know people that are in Esperanza, and so I think we're all going to get to be evangelists for this thing that's over. So we have two more projects. Um, we'd like to see Adler Road uh, have a, a left turn lane, a center left turn lane, um, and beef up the um, sidewalks in the area. Um, if we could get uh, on, as a long-term solution, that's the short term, just add a center lane um, and make sure the sidewalks are adequate. But uh, a long-term, 
would have, um, well, that is the long term. Mm -hmm. So that, I'm just saying that you're, you're, you're suggesting that we, that the city, somebody acquire a right of way. Yeah, somebody. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, Bryce, I'm not sure this is completely accurate. I don't think we were talking about. I don't think we were talking about a fire. We weren't talking about fire. Definitely a turn lane. Okay, so a turn lane. Um, facilitate I think your narrative is correct here. Okay. The sketch is not correct. Okay, so we get rid of the sketch. And uh, one, of the, <laughs> one of the things that I, I, would, I, I personally would be curious about, and Jeff and I have spoken about this, um, there is that the land across from uh, the elementary school, um, if, if that if ever could be bumped a little bit further north um, and give the through traffic of the sun, more room and get the school traffic an extra lane to turn in, um, that the traffic might move through that area more freely. The constraint is that that is part, that this may be part, and there would be funding obligations that might make it somewhat problematic, but. Um, mm -hmm. Figure a way around the those purchase department. But when you consider the, the last improvement, which is along as a road plus Adler, it does give you a way to get around Main Street um, and, and get yourself up to going uh, out uh, North 87. Um, you can do the same on Plant, but Plant has a little bit more, uh, it's more problematic because the intersections are not as easy to navigate. Uh, with roundabouts, they would be, um, and that's, a, I think, a conversation for the larger community. Um, so between Adler, um, I, and I'm not sure why we didn't put it in the, in the schematic, but uh, Adler and Esser is a good opportunity for a roundabout experiment because it would be a one lane uh, and it's a three way, it's not a four way. Um, on Esser Road, in 15 years, we'd like to see a center turn lane and an expansion of the uh, pedestrian uh, walkway to accommodate bikes, we think that there's enough roadway there uh, that would cause us to give up parking on Esser, um, which is the football parking problem that I talked about earlier, um, which is perhaps a conversation and the creation of some alternate parking ideas uh, to accommodate the, the big events at the school. And as I understand it, there are nine home games and a couple of graduations and yeah, no, that's two high five, school. Five, five home games for high school. Yeah. So it's 12, 13, 14 nights a year. I can't There was also talk about utilizing the back corner as parking for big events. Yeah, that's right. Bike. Did we talk about that? Yeah. yeah. Say that we, we talked about utilizing this model, but the bike lane becoming parking only during big events. Uh -oh. well, you could make it. You could make it. With right. someone out there flagging, you could make it. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 But right now, right, we have a schematic that we've looked at for curb to curb without doing any road improvements, just changing the stripes. We can do three lanes and one bike lane and existing curbs. Right. It's already so wide. It's already so wide. So, so that that pretty much completes our conversation. So the, these are ideas to be fleshed out. Not, these are not fixed in stone at all. Um, this is just, look, if we could get this improved and move through the community more quickly and more easily, it would help things. Nancy, um, I saw in here you talked about improvements to School Street, you talked about improvements to Adler, but you don't show a roundabout where School Street and Adler and Main Street converge. Yes. I think that's in the, um, the interim recommendations. It is. It's part of, and what I'm, what I'm what I'm trying to figure out is like how do we shuffle these cars to where they're all on the same day, and how do we sequence them? And, and I think that's yeah, so corn road is on the interim. Right. Yeah. So I can't answer to that question. Okay. Um, but I think that that is the way to integrate it. And, and some of the some of the interim recommendations did make it 
none of the comfort recommendations made it. Um, but and, and in my mind, we, we left um, Coffin Road in there because of Spencer. That, that was a new connection um, that we wanted to talk about. Um, but the way to integrate it was let's, let's get some funding. Um, let's take the responsibility for creating these projects and the, and the pictures um, off of volunteers and onto somebody to pay so that we can integrate the interim recommendations and these recommendations into one document. I'll, I'll jump into City of Burns Council gave staff money to go get consultant. So we actually have a consultant working on schematics for five points. And just last week we kind of got a first round middle where they gave us five different options. Um, so that's something we're working for. It may be included in there because it's something that the yeah. city's already working on. Uh, I want to go back to what you said about comfort. You said it's not included in there. Did you make a decision, okay, let's consider the comfort project we're not going to include it, or you just didn't get to it because it was part of the, you know, it wasn't part of the BISD stuff? No, it was, it, it's not because of the BISD stuff. It, it was already a recommendation made. Okay. So we weren't going to go back in and revisit that. Okay. We're not changing any of the interim recommendations, nor did we really include any of them in this. Um, and we don't disagree with any of that. It's just really just supplement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just a supplement. The one thing Corn Road needs to be on here, period. Because the way textile is real, realigned, the intersection of Funny drove to 46 on the west side of the town. You no longer would be able to drive up the county over the turn left, so you're going to have to go down Corey Road. So you know, I know those people don't want that at all, and I don't blame them. But what Textile did, there's no choice. No, I'm not arguing against it. No, no, no. I'm, I'm advocating for the roundabout up there that uh, I'm surprised. We are too. We are too. And, and I don't see, and I, I, I must apologize, we, we put this together, just one volunteer took on the project to put it all together, um, and, and we were moving to the fast materials. But, um, I, I, I really like the format, Vincy, uh, and the committee members. I really like this. It's simple, it's easy to follow, you know, and a, you know, make a few adjustments. And I think it really integrates into the report well if we can add the other projects yes. that we need. Uh, and it's just a question of how to organize those. So, uh, I think I agree with that. Council has that everybody could have worked with. This template, you're on to it for our final report. If we're gonna, what I would have been talking to Don about is something that he and I are going to be sitting in front of county commissioner's court or the city burning, city council or fair of city council presenting these things. And it's going to be a one page handout for per project and your template is, is just superb about that. And it made me think about the, uh, you know, Don's table of contents that we all talked about before, that I've, I've listed like, what I would have like to add anyway in your templates is this order of magnitude of cost. Uh, like one bullet item of what you think it solves, right? How long it might take, um, and then the, uh, some expression of the public support. I think those are the hot buttons that we are as citizens group asked to cover. And we're not asked to do detailed designs and cross sections and detailed cost estimates. But here's what the community wanted and here's where they are. And your templates are perfect. So they should find one for that. Steve Sharma is to be found this way. You didn't worry him out. He did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speak up, Steve. <laughs> so, So uh, I want to remove my stroke comments. I've misread the drawing wrong. So take that out of the record, if you will. But the, um, what's our, how, what is the process from here forward? Because obviously they're presenting. We're going to talk about that. Okay. And then part two is, yeah, nodes are not really addressed in this. And nodes are a huge factor, I think, it's fair to say, in backups. And, um, it's not the actual pavement that the cars are going on, or even the width of the road. It's, you know, so I don't, I don't know where that fits in. Okay. Then we did we did have that in conversation and in, in, in our haste 
It didn't come through. Yeah. Um, he's, he's makes way, so he's, <laughs> he's makes way. He's, it does, he's it does, but it, it's not delicious. like it can't be amended. Right, right. Yeah, because we did talk about in, um, well, there's a, we'll, we'll address it. Right on. Yeah. But you may have to participate. Okay. Gary? Okay. Yeah, I assume that these are not necessarily listed in order of priority. They're, they seem to follow a geographic flow Thank to you. get us there, just like our eight interims were not necessarily stacked in priority. So, so here I think the, the, the final report would show, if I'm envisioning this correctly, 24, 25, 26 projects if we, that we all agree upon. And, that, and, and would the intent be that we would prioritize them or leave them to the public entities to decide how that may work? I'll give you my take on it. Uh, it doesn't mean that that's the way it's going to turn out, but I think it's not up to us to prioritize this right. because they're, I mean, we haven't even talked about do we want to weigh in on TxDOT's future transportation plan, which, I mean, they've got a transportation plan that probably affects our mobility and congestion a lot more than these projects are, you know, the ones on 46. I think we need to recognize that, and I don't know whether we want to weigh in on it or not, but at some point, uh, the priority is governed by who's got the money to do what, and how is, you know, is, 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 is the Highway 46 improvement and the city of Bear County, or Kendall County, uh, adding money to that project, a higher priority than us buying right away for Hoffman Road. Okay, which one's a higher priority? We have to decide those things. Each political subdivision does in the context of what is confronting us. I don't think we can do that as a committee. Here. Well, in that same regard, Don, yeah, with all due respect to Ben, I'm not sure that we're qualified to get into the, the minutia of the construction of the, of the roadway, how much right away is required, uh, you know, with the lanes, depth of asphalt, and those other things. And I think if we can just forward conceptually those projects that we think are important to help relieve congestion, I understand that to be our charge and, and not try to incorporate into our final report a lot of that. Although we, the, the, the committee has the consensus that I've heard around cost estimates, which will be reflected in these red sections of pavement, that we'd, that we'd use some kind of rule of thumb of some average case. Cost, cost per so mile. So it's going to be on this order of magnitude of cost. It might take as long to build or whatever. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I think I'm hearing the same construction and interpreting. The clarification I want to make is when. But we, as we move forward, we've got to keep in mind the court order gave us three charges, short-term, long-term, and policy. So we've, we've got to be responsive to those three. And I think in that universe of those three, we've got all kinds of opportunities, policy-wise, maybe to emphasize nodes over roads, um, roundabouts as a priority decision on city or county construction, but over not, or whatever. Take things seriously, be innovative, Think about safe ways school for kids, all this kind of stuff. We we can make recommendations around policy that don't have to be reflected in every single project that's on our list. All right, I'm gonna take a little I'm gonna crawl out on the ice here and see if y'all wanna push me under. Uh, we have a report from the subcommittee here. And the question of course really is what do we want to do with this? We want to adopt it in whole? Do we want to adopt it conditionally? Do we want to, as a committee, start whacking on it, say, I don't agree with that project, take it out? Uh, I think what I would like to do, uh, there are a few things that, that we've identified that we'd like to see, you know, modified, you know, changing to sections and things like that. But I, I think the first step in moving this forward would be, would be to say, are you happy with the projects that are listed here? Can we agree that these are important projects 
and that they fall in the long term or short term or developer funded projects. Is there is anything here that anything in here that somebody can't live with? So many of the projects that are listed are already in development agreements. So it seems to me you can take those off the table because that's that's not something that we really address other than looking at the additional connections that might make that project a little bit um, healthier for the community. Yeah, I think it's important for the community to see. I mean, they, they know that Wicked Tree is going to be developed. They know that Regent Park is being developed. But absent seeing this, they may not be aware, or probably not aware, of the different road improvements that will be um, implemented to make travel a lot more easy. Because you know, when you do the math, you start figuring out, my gosh, with all these houses south of the Balcones and Western 10 and North of Scenic Blue, you're looking at you know, 12, 13,000 people, something like that. A mini burning in that area, how are people going to get around? And I think when you look at these maps, you get a better sense, oh, that's how they're going to get around. And I think it will give people more comfort level. So, from a policy standpoint, obviously, you have these, you know, uh, it says not proposed alignment illustration purposes only. So those are kind of aspirational roads. Is that a is that a thoroughfare? I mean, do we do we start talking about how those are achieved? I mean, maybe they're already in development agreements, but in some cases, I think it becomes a question about you know how we propose that be fulfilled. Or do we even touch on that? Meaning, is it something where you say, hey, we're going to go ahead and put it on a thoroughfare plan, and it's going to be a long term goal? Or is it say, well, hey, we need it tomorrow? The, the one that, that I that think fits that exact situation is the extension of uh, Mallory Lane, or what do you call it, to Corley Road, the, the little short section there. That clearly is not, gonna, not, not covered by a development agreement, correct? And in order to make that last connection, somehow somebody's going to have to step up to the plate, either the county or the city or the developer or textile. And so I think there's a case where we, we do need to weigh in and say that needs to be part of the major thoroughfare plan and it's an important thing to do if we believe that. But I don't know that we want to necessarily um, critique each developer's method of complying with the city's major thoroughfare plan. I think that's the city planning. That's again our our thoroughfare plan really is just we want to connect this road to that road. Goes this way to that way to this way. We just, that's our, our goal is to guide developers. When they show up and do development, we want that. I think there's an appropriate way to do it. Yeah. Do it. So yeah. consider it when you do it. And and that's you know, I, I know we've we've talked around a lot about our aversion to greenfield roads, but I think that needs to be qualified by saying if there's a greenfield road and the, the owner of the property wants the road there, then the greenfield road is not necessarily bad. You know, it's probably a good thing, especially if he's paying for it or she's paying for it. I want to suggest that we, we look at what's being proposed here. A lot of this is in the capital improvement already. It's already there. It just needs to be done. But then this other that we were looking at, like, um, like we just want up and these different roads I think the public needs to understand that's how it's going to work in the future, how we're going to get around and it's important to know that and most of that's going to be done in the right form of the developer when it's done now um, the difficult part of that is when is it going to be done um, you know, I think a lot of this stuff can be talked about here, so it's going to be short term or long term <laughs> but I think it's important that people understand what we're losing on this stuff. Just like the, actually that thing that goes down through the bridge of the park is actually Main Street. It's just a community of Main Street. So, um, anyway, I think all this stuff needs to be in there for consideration. But you're going to have to determine when it's going to be built, who's going to build it. Don, back to your question, you're not asking us if we think some projects are missing, you're asking us do we support these projects as being necessary, correct? 
that I, I'm actually just kind of feeling out there to see whether how do how do y'all feel about these? Are you comfortable moving forward with them? If so, then we can say okay, these are good. Now we're going to go back to our other projects okay. that are clearly more controversial, that are bolder, that are whatever, and we need to work through those. So we can say these are pretty good. We need to polish them up a little bit, and then we shift our focus. I think there needs to be some clarification. So is that the policy of your company? Mm -hmm. Yeah. About sizes of rooms yeah. and who's doing what? Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll jump in here. I'm Ms. Wise. We took a meeting the week before. We had discussed how to pull in the information from the public input into these. And once I get the data, the data, the spreadsheet from Cecilio, my plan was to create something similar to this, it's just going to be a little bit more intense because it will have information drawn in from those tables as far as how many people commented if it was on there. Um, I, I don't know if we maybe want to come up with some categories that these fit in, but like you said, we've got some in here that it doesn't sound like a, the low, low work I'm sitting on for the so that when we get the bigger information from the spreadsheet, yeah, where it falls in. Really, as an example of that, well, hey, you all get to do it, fantastic. The only question would be, they're they're going to do a ten-year. Would the county be interested in upping that to twenty-five years? Yeah, you got to realize tenure. The recent rains would have would have uh, overtopped that yeah. if you've had a tenure. So you're not getting you're not gaining much with a tenure design. So, but back to to the northern point. I mean, that's that's the thing. As I look at at this, like I'm not saying, oh, this is horrible work at all. In fact, I'm like, okay, yeah, all right. But then I'm sort of going, yeah, but there's a whole lot missing that we discussed earlier on in this in these planning discussions. I mean, I know it was a year gap or whatever, but still. There's a lot missing there that's, of course, represented on the AMPO data, the, the crowdsourcing map, that I think our committee dogpiled onto as much as the public did. And that's, I don't, I think there's some pieces in here that definitely rep, you know, will reflect that, but there's a heck of a lot that won't. Yeah. Let me try to restate it a little clearer. There's a lot of missing, I guess, I would say. From a geographic location standpoint, is this section, are these sections of roadways and hike and bike trails? Are, are, that are listed in these pictures. Does anybody object to anything that's proposed there in terms of geographic location? You know, we may come back and say it needs to be wider, or it needs to have wider nodes and narrower roads, or it needs to have three lanes instead of five lanes, or vice versa. But is there any objection to saying these are places that need attention? Well, what you're saying is, we agree to pay any attention to whether it's a five lane or three lane, we can work on that later. But that has to be consistent with the cities. Mm -hmm. Like whether it's 86 for a right away or 102 for a right away. Mm -hmm. uh, now I, I think the location is okay. We just need to find two or three to do. And I like the idea of this wide 10 foot and get it out of the street. I hate driving my people bicycle to be driving there. Um, are there? I think I think a I think a broader question along these lines is you know are there controversial pieces of this? I mean I see this road going past Manger Springs off of Regent Boulevard, and on the one hand in here we're like I can say hey that doesn't bother me I don't know anybody over there I do know I mean the mayor's so just <laughs> fixed to that alignment, but I go okay well you know. Do we need to have some public feedback component to this? I would, I would comment that that right away exists. The Manger Springs development put that right away there that exists today as a right away. Uh, so we, we made the park line of their right away to the Manger Springs right away. Um, so the, the as a city will say, well, that right away has always been there. It was there before your house got built. Now we'll get told, well, we were told that was going to be a park forever. <laughs> that, that's something. Run into as a city all the time. Like, well, if that's not true, your salesman did salesman job. 
Uh, it is right away. It is right away. It's a plan for a future road. So, okay, let's take that one out. That's a bad example. But the, 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 the broader point is, are there any other sticky? Well, even, sensitive areas? Even, sensitive even areas. if there are, Ben, I think the committee has done a good job of saying these are plausible, rational suggestions that improve our short term or long term mobility. And, you know, let's put it out there. And if we get a big reaction, negative reaction well, that's up to policymakers to say hey we need to look at that a little farther or a little closer but I think to say that we're gonna to think that we're gonna restate or categorize or leave off or amend something to avoid controversy I don't think we should do that. So may I say um, and Jeff correct me if I'm wrong but the the uh, North South connector to the Bucky's stuff um, has a couple of uh, properties that right away would need to be applied. The little green tail at the end of the Maker Springs right away is another little piece that would need to be applied. And the connection up to John's Road. Um, and as far as I can acknowledge that, those are the only three components that actually have acquisition of right of way. I believe so, yeah. I mean, that's a good the rest is being done by development agreements and or existing roads. And, and I would comment those segments are on our further plan. So if those tracks were to ever be developed, we're going to be able to get those right away um, by the developer. Here. I tend to be a list kind of guy, and it'd be helpful for me, especially since you know, I, I've seen most of this earlier, but for the most part, to see it consolidated. See it as a list and know which which projects are already essentially under development, and then the input we have is somewhat moving. And then the other part of that, Don, is is the the areas of Kendall County and whether there's any any driving needs outside of Precinct Four and and Burton. If there's there's projects that need to be looked at by this committee. Whether it's a bird time with a failure or anything like that, that we need to discuss in the next yes, couple meetings. We do. Okay, I, I, I'm gonna. We're so with that said, I do like the, these projects. There's nothing there that flashes out at me, and I think they should stay intact at least for our next discussion. Okay. Well, Zach, I want to make sure you get clearly we're not approving these projects today. But I think what we've heard is there's strong support for the location of these projects and so that we don't spring anything on anybody or you know ramrod it through what I'd like to do is say we're going to just say this is good for now we'll come back with uh, maybe some updates at the next meeting and at some point we'll say okay, we want to consider these formally and we will take an action on it and then we will either adopt or reject them. Is everybody comfortable with that approach? Thank you very much. Thank you again to the committee members for the hard work. May I, may I say that we're not meeting anymore? <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> for the time being. <laughs> you know, I tried that one time too. They told me that was the fine art of upward delegation. And that, that's not appropriate. <laughs> Well, for tomorrow, shall we say, yes. there is no meeting, and until we have a clear so call and call. Yeah. So that, does that bring up discussion regarding how additional projects not identified by the project subcommittee are to be identified? Well, I, <laughs> that, that, is, that is the concern I have. Uh, I'd like to go back to the, the additional meeting on August 31st, because I think we, we suspended that uh, when we couldn't get it up. So it was there, it seemed like everybody was okay with it, but yes okay so we are going to have that but we will have a meeting the following right. week everybody get it <laughs> okay we have two items here i don't think we have enough time in the next 25 minutes to really adequately address either one of them completely so i think what i'd like to do is have a open discussion about how we might consider additional projects understanding it's not going to be the final Conversation. I'll start. 
and northern post on it. I'm not aware. Of, I, I, I was I tried and was unable to attend the meeting and listen to Keely talk about the crowdsourcing assessment or summary and went forward round about it up to School Street now. I really want to. I don't know how to move that forward any faster. But that we need. We need to know summary level. What did the public input tell us? That to me is awfully powerful. We're a citizens-based committee. We went out and got the data, and we need it. We need to be able to act accordingly, report accordingly. And I just don't know where we are. Uh, I just don't know where we are. From what I saw, you're doing a fantastic job of trying to get everything together, especially on projects like that, because that's still right mm -hmm. on the map. Um, but it's no vacation right now. Well, so let me, let me address that. He got through two categories, the densest ones, and he had two more to go, and they were the least dense. Is this, so has he gone beyond that one round? Yeah. He's done everything on the map. He's done everything. Okay, he, what I first heard yeah. him say is he was going to take that as a test case. Yeah, they, he was Proof like a concept. concept, but uh, he he's an engineer. <laughs> he's well, on vacation right now. He was on vacation. He knows he walked with each other. He did the entire public input. Okay, well, I, I only bring that up because, Don, I think that's key to us adding projects to the list. And by the way, don't, remember, don't forget that we said the interim report recommendations plus today's work is where we, where we stand right now. Um, but I think I think we've, we really need the insight into the summer data before we say, so hey, here's a good list. I, I believe you'll be here next, in the next meeting. Uh, and, you know, his data, I agree with you, it's, it's important, but his data won't include a lot of stuff that people didn't weigh in on. I mean, they, I mean, they, they were kind of bias towards new things, but I'm sure that they didn't say, oh, well, I don't remember seeing a lot of stuff. We really need to address it in 46 ways. I, I'm okay with this. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of these projects drew no public comment whatsoever, but there was a lot of projects that did, and I want to make sure we, we acknowledge yeah, just That's not the only source of information. Just I, I totally get it, but it's a real important one. Uh, it's missing. Um, so just to be clear, we expect to have that presentation next meeting? Hopefully, yeah. Two TV. weeks from today? Yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, city has a capital improvements plan. Right. And some of those projects are here. Um, it, how hard would it be for us to say, uh, to see that capital improvements plan or have it presented and say, what part of this capital improvements plan should we validate, review, whatever the rest of this report? Well, I, well I, I'm asking, I don't know what it really looks like. I have a question is, we have like a little one page project summary. Is that, is that what you gave me, John? So that's included in our minutes from, Second or third meeting okay. um, that were submitted here, so <coughs> we can bring forward. Is this things like is like a Oak Park that that project and Rosewood or what along those lines? Yeah. Um, <coughs> so some of them are, and it's assuming just the roadways. So right now, our five year CIP, we have roadway entering projects. And miscellaneous drainage projects, some of those things, roadway projects that we've just identified. It's preparing the stormwater utility, preparing the hands for things that you put together. I mean, I think it'd be good for us to be aware of what the city's already working on and integrate it and just assume that that's already enough to be approved, the chain, you know, or semi approved portion. So what we, what we do so staff keeps that list running I mean, every year when we come forward with the budget. On next year's CIP, kind of the five-year CIP rolls. When it comes to the budget, we pull that, that year's CIP projects and we put it in the budget. Whether we get council approval of that project, but sometimes projects might span multiple fiscal years. We have to plan that out. So we just have to do a project summary sheet. I think 
place that's included. For sure. Is there a way to, to translate that summary sheet into <coughs> sheets like this on a project by project basis without a lot of work, or is that? They're, they're, well, they're more similar to that. There's a picture. Oh, it's it's gone. Gone. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. Well, let's why don't we just integrate those and we'll consider those kind of the same way we considered these. We'll let you present them. These are what's on there. And if we've already covered it, you can just say that we already addressed that one and cover the ones that we addressed. That's what I said a while ago. A lot of the stuff that our committee had is parts of the old capital improvement. I think you're going to see a lot of the same. Yeah, now, I've been looking at all of this, particularly the Army, from a different aspect. Not mobility necessarily, but what I've been looking at is safety and mobility. And if you look at your low water crossing map that you have in front of and you can see you can't get from here to there, you can't get anywhere. And then you look at, well, where is the, the, where is the EMS, where is the fire department, where is the sheriff's office? Well, you can't go down that road. Can't get to these side of the So I've got a whole list of stuff that I look at on the projects that you could consider doing that opens the emergency end of it, open, open stuff. And you know, I wouldn't mind presenting that to y'all. Um, and, and, and it coordinates the, the city doing the drainage study, it coordinates the drainage study with mobility, with emergency. I would, on those same lines, city staff and county staff are making a presentation to the commissioner's court on the mayor's court date in September. Yeah, the first, first or second yeah. meeting in September. Well, we're doing something similar to the commissioner's court, but we're doing a presentation on drainage projects <coughs> to help improve safety across the town. Yeah, what I'm looking at is drainage projects that you can make. Because you've got to remember, we're talking about millions of dollars now. So I'm trying to. What what is the best choice? Eliminating this drainage floodplain. <coughs> okay, if you can get Adler Road over to Esser Road, and you can go down. There's another one that I've mentioned before, but starting at I think the county line, actually starting at Balcones Creek Interchange, coming across where the the uh, developers want to develop and trying to go for expert road and come up Old Fredericksburg Road, there, instead of the right angle corners, put a radius in there where you can drive more reasonably. But then bring that up to Cascade Caverns, go over to Old San Antonio, go north of Old San Antonio, take care of the Minger Creek crossing, which gets you out of the flood. Then you're on Fry Street, go up Fry Street until you get to the end of it, then make a slight jog Cross the Civil Creek with a high water bridge, cross uh, River Road, and then follow that channel up to uh, Tyson and Plant Street out of the 100 year floodplain. And then go up Plant Street and it ties into Adler. So if you can get that stretch out of the 100 year floodplain, you can now open up where emergency equipment can get almost anywhere in Bernie as it is right now. You're stuck. You can't get emergency equipment anywhere. So you know, I'm coming at it a little bit different deal. But a lot of things I'm talking about is already in. So I, I believe that the city's working on some of those solutions. Um, and I also wonder if there are, you know, I know we're not supposed to talk about funding these ideas, but at the same time, I still wonder about water development board funds to you know, facilitate some of the ideas that come up, come up today uh, with these crossings. So because they are looking at this. Yeah, and one of the things like in the busy was in the stuff she presented, she was talking about roadways. Well, if you're going to do the roadway, you've got to do the drainage also, which the price goes sky high. Uh, so a lot of these have, just like I, the example I gave of Cascade, it's a $9 million roadway project, but it includes $3 million of the drainage. Right. John's Road, several of those others will all do that same way. It'll be significant yeah. drainage parts of those. Just to comment, which everyone knows, so we have the we have city of Bernie has consultants working on a drainage master plan right now.
times we have a stormwater committee, we're coming up with stormwater projects, and we have a list of 30-something stormwater projects. And with our stormwater utility, we're looking at how to start funding those projects. That's a complete separate process, but a lot of those stormwater projects are also kind of roadway projects, as John was mentioning, with safety, but also for crossings. Bridges on Old San Antonio, bridges on School Street, and there's a culverts on Adler. A lot of our drainage projects are actual road projects as well, so it all ties together. And the Texas Flood Regional Flood Infrastructure Planning Group, you're on that group? Of course, correct. So all of City of Bernie, so part of the county is in the Guadalupe River Basin, but all of City of Bernie is in the Cibolo Basin, which flows to San Antonio. San Antonio River, so the San Antonio flood plan. Um, correct. So all, so all that's all burning. So there's a, a regional flood planning group that I'm on the board of, where we're looking at how to spend Texas Water Development Board money for projects. And we have a consultant. That flood planning group has a consultant, <coughs> and they're identifying projects from Bernie to the Gulf of Mexico and the San Antonio River Basin. And that those regional groups are part of the statewide master plan that the legislature intends to fund. One of the main criteria in selecting projects for funding is critical infrastructure and accessibility for communities, things like that. So I think you're on the right track. We just need to find a way to coordinate that. And back to the original question, how do we bring forward these other projects? I think when you're ready, John, uh, I think we find a way to put it on the screen or Distribute it and hand it out and give it to us in advance. It's actually, it, some of them are included in the June 1st subcommittee min minutes. Um, it uh, addresses the list that, um, I just looked it up on the website. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but um, if we can get an updated version. Yeah, we, should, we probably just updated them a couple months back as part of the next budget cycle. I do, and uh, I think the presentation was really great. I like the pictures that help people like me, and I think it'll help sell the public. Um, one of the questions I had was, or thoughts is, what I remember this all being when uh, the judge and Handrin came out in the original, you know, what are we going to see that the public is going to be able to say that, oh, it's better? So we can say all this thing about the feedback and AMPO, but it's the guy and the gal on the road who are driving and said, oh, I can definitely get through town easier. That's going to be the proof of the pudding. And um, I, I guess my question relates to, and Bitsy and, and uh, to Jeff, the Cascade Caverns Road with Scenic Loop at I-10. You know, I think that's a really good plan, and I love that. But the public is going to probably poo-poo it, because right now we have gridlock, because at I-10 there, when it's a red light, it backs up all the way, and nobody moves until that green right light turns green. And so if we put in that beautiful roundabout, which I totally agree with, I think it'll work, but then it's gonna get flummoxed by the gridlock that happens as we know at school time at eight and right. three or whatever. So I'm hoping, I know Jeff, you said that we might have a plan. I mean, the ample plan is three to five years out. Right. We're in gridlock today. Correct, and part, part of that issue is the textile admits it, is they play with the signal timing more time to the front road. So the scenic loop people are getting backed up because Textile wants the front road. So, I, so I, all I'm saying is I think we have a good plan, but there's other pieces that may play that could form us that we need to consider in there. And I'm hoping, like you say, the city's looking at that, that maybe there is something we can add to this because this is a good plan. Thanks, Thanks John. John. Rich? You know, to, that's a good point, Tom. But maybe on each one page summary, we need to add or a goal or an objective of this particular project, like why it's recommended. You can do that in two or three sentences to your point to explain what the logic is of each one of these projects. I think that would be a good, a good addition. And I think also the 
the risk to it, which is if we don't get that changed, it's going to fail. It's going to fail until it gets done three, five years out. Right. You know, we need, and we talked about this before, even if you put a roundabout in the house, and they didn't want to see the SKA cabinet. We had a signal there, it might back the track up and drop to a roundabout. So you need to tie all these things together. Yes. Okay, Norlin, you had a comment. Thank you. I was just going to say, I'm quietly said this in the subcommittee meeting so that I didn't kind of volunteer to do this out in public, but the capital improvements plan sheet for City of Bernie, like I said, it's got the picture, it's got a bunch of different fields here about, you know, how it's going to help, notes and everything. My hope was to take everything, every project that, I'm going to volunteer for this, um, and create a sheet like this. You're doing great. Every Come on. Budget. Yes, I know. Don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to second the motion. <laughs> 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 I hope to create something like this because then we, we've talked about things and meetings that I want to make sure that everyone's ideas not only get recorded, but it's something that we can keep using over and over again to show the public. Yeah. 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 There's no reason to be crazy. Things that are Fantastic idea. We won't. Capitalize on it today, but probably next week. Okay, great. Yes, ma'am. Um, one is. Tell me your name again. Is Via Lisa Carol? Yeah, Via Lisa. Um, one is if I've missed it in the meetings that I've attended, but the short term, long term, is there any kind of identifier there? Like zero to five years, or zero to six, and then long term is six plus? Because as these 14,000 people end up over the next, you know, decade moving into the west side of 10, and then more schools are going to be built over there. The traffic flow will change. It'll move. The roundabouts, of course, you know, I think I mentioned it weeks ago, up in Keller, Texas, they work great to move a whole lot of traffic. But if you don't identify actually just an idea of maybe what's on the table right now, but in five or ten years, I might be dead. I might be gone. Everything might change. 15,000 people on the other side of 10, that might become the new Bernie with the Main Street with who knows what fancy stuff over there. And so I think just approving short term and long term, and then even the transportation plan that the city of Bernie has, you know, are we. Are we really looking at stuff just to lay up for a transportation plan right now that those long-term things will be putting money that won't be effective in 10 years or whenever it happens? I know it's very complicated, but just the short-term, long-term identifiers to me just, and I know Mr. Kites, you've been looking at this for 20 years, 30 years, and that this has been talked about for a long time, and you've seen the changes just in the time I've been in Marnie. The particular road that I'm acutely affected by has moved and moved and moved and moved because of several reasons, but one, because HOAs are like, no, it's not happening here. No, it's not happening here. Other people are moving. So I just, I kind of think that short and long-term identifier is important. It's important for those of us who are going to decide to stay or go. Is there a standard definition in the industry about long-term versus short-term? How do you control it with a shorter? If you go back and look at the capital improvements program over the years, there's a whole bunch of stuff that was supposed to be done in 2007 or 2001. It never happened. Right. It'll show up again in 2019. That never happens. Right. So I don't know how you do it because the money comes into it. Yeah, money. well, we had the note presentation that talked about how, oh, we did roundabouts first. And then as it developed, then we ended up having to go around this way. And then we went through this way. And so, and at what point is Kendall County, I mean, I don't live in the city, but at what point is Kendall County, and maybe Bernie, going to say, guess what? We're going to kind of keep things nice here. We might not have 50,000 people in the city of Bernie, 
But at what point do you say, we're going to compromise everything that it is? And so uh, I'm not a business person. Nobody's putting money in my pocket. But uh, I'm just saying that every day it's going to change. I mean, tomorrow, who knows what's going to get shut down or what what's going to happen on the peripheral in this world. And I'm just saying that I think as a public person in the county at this point, some timelines would really make things uh, we'd look at things. It would be nice. I think we all crave a sense of maybe not certainty, but less insecurity and uncertainty. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to balance that with honesty that we just can't predict that. We don't know what's going to happen with the coronavirus or water shortage or a meteor falling in, you know, Reichberg. But, but you can predict uh, improvements and and allowing these subdivisions to come in and such. And you have a, a kind of a, an idea of, so far of what I've seen today is they have a real good idea of what's developing on the on the west side of I-10. Uh, and so that's pretty much not long term, that's immediate or very short term. But is that, Rich, is that a 10 year projection? Or? That, that went through 29, but it could very well be 31, 32. Yeah. Sometimes these demographers are a tad aggressive. So if you had two or three years on, that's it. But not a major difference. Just, but still, that's a ten-year that's a ten-year plan. What you're saying, yeah, pretty much. So that's you know, at least you have a a time frame. You know that pretty much in the next ten years, this is what's going to happen to this the educational development and or the need for schools, the need for roads, the need for development for uh, businesses and everything else, and transportation effect affects that. But at least that gives somebody some idea of what to expect and what they're going to be looking at down the road. Okay, you got a comment, sir? Yeah, uh, Dan Denbo, 111 Sh Shaley Road. Uh, I, I thought this presentation was really good, so I just wanted to say thanks for having that. Two reactions to it. One, living over by that low water crossing, in 25 years we've had six or seven or 10 hundred year floods and at least two 500 year events, so I, I don't know. You already commented on that, sorry, but it's like, 10 years, it's like you know, 10 years, you know, once a month. <laughs> Probability. Huh? Probability, yeah. Yeah, but the Lemon Creek is like, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do, just add like an inch of pavement. That's a 10 year flood level. <laughs> uh, my other reaction to the, uh, I'm not on that side of the interstate, but I'm seeing all the projects, and I'm not familiar with all the interim projects or all that, but uh, I, I'm left wondering about Upper Balconis. And you're putting a lot of roads in the upper bound conus, so I'm assuming somewhere there's a plan that upper bound conus has to have some, something done too. You know you're right about that. I and mean, that's just my reaction from this. I, my my question come out of well, you're going to put a lot of roads there, but what if nobody's going to be able to go down upper bound conus? Then so what's the point? It's an error of omission because we we talked about it quite a bit. Okay. That was <coughs> um, in, in the conversation. It's a great comment. And so Upper Balcones is a road on a major thoroughfare plan. And so if anyone were to develop, and some of it's already developed out, but there's a handful of big properties. If any of those were to develop, we would get right away road improvements with that because it's on the first. Thank you. It's four o'clock and Bryce Murray's leaving. I got to <laughs> see it from school. I got to get in school traffic. Anybody, any other public comments before we? <laughs> Thank y'all for being here. Thank you for your hard work. We made a lot of progress today. We'll see you in the week. So
I was talking to Rich Sun. What I'm actually the document what happens when you think the other end of the thousand acres is in the ETJ okay. Ernie has decided to extend water service on it. So when I, when I start documenting these things, real parochial because what you're going to say is what the public is. That's, what, that's why I tend to bring in those two organizations like yourself. I just want to get what the answer is. Oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah, that was a very interesting discussion between the council. Yeah. You know, for me, these wickets are a fairly new phenomenon. Yeah, here, yeah, that's right, that's right. And so they're taking off like wildfire. The numbers are using these things left and right. And we're going to have to watch that. It's, it's, so what if one fails? What do you do? You don't have water out there, right? You can't connect. You can, you're out of it. You're all dry out there. I think people don't realize if I were buying a home in one of these places, I think I'm going to make that kind of investment and something goes wrong. So you can carry out like, that's an issue. Uh, the more, uh, highest concentrations in Harris County. Yeah, well, well, that's Houston, man, right? That's what Houston does. It just, so the problem is they've explored that mentality of developer tool. They call it a tool. It's a funny mechanism. It's a really bond. Right, to talk about. right. The point is that, yes, the developers have gotten with the legislature. I watched 55 of those get created in the last legislative session. And this is how it is. Because the legislature is very, very Oh, yeah. Very difficult.